By the end of this month of July, the FedNow Federal Reserve Nationwide Instant Payment Service will be launched. I'm going to share how this relates to biblical prophecy and share where this is so as this develops, you can see it for yourselves. Shalom everyone, this is Ty Green. We've reviewed the FedNow Instant Payment System months ago on this channel, so this will be an update. Later on this month will be the launch of the FedNow Instant Payment Service. Look at this. The Federal Reserve has announced that 57 companies have completed the formal testing and certification process for FedNow, clearing them to begin using the new instant payment system once it launches later in July. That's this month. FedNow was developed by the Federal Reserve Banks as a nationwide instant payment service that operates around the clock every day of the year. According to the press release with FedNow, businesses and individuals will be able to send and receive instant payments at any time of day and recipients will have full access to funds immediately, giving them greater flexibility to manage their money and make time-sensitive payments. Sounds good, doesn't it? It's leading somewhere. Early adopter organizations are primarily composed of financial institutions that facilitate the sending and receiving of transactions and service providers that support transaction activity, they said. A total of 41 financial institutions on the list are participating as senders, receivers, and or correspondents supporting settlements, including, look at this, JP Morgan, BNY Mellon, Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank Corps, and People's Bank, 15 institutions that provide processing services on behalf of participants have also been selected, including Finastra, Open Payment Network, and FPS Gold. And here's that list scrolling on your screen. The early adopters are now performing final trial runs on the service in collaboration with the U.S. Department of Treasury to confirm their readiness to support live transactions over the new system, the release said. We are on track for the FedNow service launch with a strong cohort of financial institutions and service providers of all sizes in the process of completing the final round of readiness testing, said Ken Montgomery, the first vice president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston and FedNow program executive. With Go Live nearing, financial institutions and their industry partners should be confident in moving forward with plans to join the network of organizations participating in the FedNow service. As FedNow rolls out and gains adoption, more financial institutions are expected to adopt and build on the new system so that they can offer instant payment services to their customers. Montgomery said that as a platform for innovation, the FedNow service is intended to support multiple use cases such as account to account transfer. That's like Cash App, request for payment, bill payments, and many others. The Fed Reserve plans to work with and on board new financial institutions later in 2023 after the initial launch, once the system has been tested in a live environment. Ultimately, the central bank wants all of the United States 10,000 financial institutions plugged into the FedNow system. FedNow is set to launch later in July, but the exact date has yet to be announced. Did you see that? Ultimately, the central bank wants all of the United States 10,000 financial institutions plugged into the FedNow system. This is America, the United States. Many argue about the digital dollar, CBDCs, what this FedNow system is and what it isn't. One thing is for sure, it's a transition into the digital currency, not only here in the U.S., 
but around the world. Now track this progression because here is what it looks like in the Bible. Please give attention to this as we live. You will see how this is just a pixel in a much bigger picture. Go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 17. In that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. The focus today is on the first part of this verse that no man might buy or sell. The ability to permit or deny one's access to the economic system cannot be controlled the way it will be in the near future. This present system of cash alongside credit must change. All transactions will be recorded on the ledger and it will be essential and efficient in some cases it will slide into becoming mandatory. Please understand this. In and of itself, it's a progression within technology, right? Anything can be used nefariously. And this is what the Bible points out here in Revelation chapter 13. Access to purchase goods and services to buy or even sell will be controllable. Did we not watch Bo Lee, the deputy managing director at the IMF, talk about the programmability of the upcoming CBDCs? You can target funds on an individual level. It's a good thing until this biblical event happens in verse 17. Then at that point, unless you had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, you will be denied access to the economic system. We are a few steps from this event. Start at verse 1 of this chapter and read on. What does this mean for mankind? This world is headed into judgment. When we read verse 17 of Revelation chapter 13, this event occurs during the time of judgment upon the earth, Israel's 70th week that runs alongside the tribulation. Folks miss the symbology at the beginning of this chapter with the beast rising up out of the sea, so they don't yet realize how close we are to this transition. These biblical studies of the written word of God are for a purpose. John chapter 20 verse 31 sums it up. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, in that believing you might have life through his name. Biblical prophecy serves a purpose. It is not so that we will be in fear. It is to encourage faith, faith in Jesus Christ. It is to encourage us to repentance and toward salvation through Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 and 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Second Peter 3 and 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Today is the day of salvation. You can be prepared to meet God right now. You must believe in your heart that Jesus died for you on that cross. For we have all sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. For we all have a sin debt that we cannot pay. The wages of sin is death, right? So we must trust in what Jesus did for us up on that cross. We must believe it with our hearts and confess it with our mouths. Jesus was buried and on the third day, God raised him up. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So just come as you are. Look at this, Titus 3, verses 3 through 7. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, 
serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. All right, I will leave it right there. We must use our remaining time wisely. Amen. Live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom.